Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for taking your time to watch my presentation. My name is Niki Pratama, and I'm from Bina Nusantara University. I'm from Occupational Health, Safety, and Administration in the Engineering, and I'm from LA41 class. So my presentation is about hazard identification, risk assessment, and risk control, HIRAT for short, implementation at the workplace review. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to review five papers, five different papers that that all of them have different companies that that have been reviewed by the writers. So in order to see or access the paper that I've used, you don't have to post the video to copy the link because I've put the link in the description below. So what you have to do is go to the description and just click or copy the link to access it. Okay? Let's move to the reason why I've done this review. In the working environment, there are many things that could affect the worker's performance. Some of them are salary, workplace location, the co-workers, safety, superiors, and etc. But one of them, that is maybe the most important one, is safety. Why well, you may ask, it's because one single safety failed could affect the company and could make problems in long term and short term. So, the reason for that is not just formality, but it is a list of standards and regulation that must be met to ensure a safe working environment. Now, in the past, health and safety wasn't that much of a top priority like nowadays. One of the worst and greatest example is the Chernobyl incident in the 1986 when the reactor number 4 blew up, making the radio the area radioactive and it really inhabitable and unlivable for several decades or more. So now not just health and safety standard that step up, the safety tools and the equipment quality have also stepped up much further. One of the example is the cutting show cutting show that used by most or even all the factories nowadays. So the system works like this. The saw have some sensor, some sort of sensor that could detect a thing that that is not supposed to be cut in the first place, like human fingers or something like that. Okay, when the sensor detected the thing is too close to the sawing blade or the cutting blade, the system will immediately stop the blade to ensure that the thing isn't cut. It is very, very cool. And because safety and hierarchy are so important, a bunch of preparation and assessment is important to ensure the workers and local people health and safety. There are even many regulations, not only in the workplace, but also national rules that set the standard of health and safety aspects in the workplace. These rules that I've mentioned earlier, not just as a formality, but to ensure that tragic things or same accident never happen again, and of course, to maximize safety. The example is, the company give their staff some training, not just how to work well, but also how to identify, minimize, and control risk. Okay. Now let's move on to the theoretical foundation that underlying my review here. The first thing is hazard identification, risk assessment, and risk control, or HIRARC for short. HIRARC is a method of preventing or minimizing work accidents. HIRARC is also an occupational health and safety management system to identify, assess, and mitigate risk that may occur in the workplace. The goal is to minimize accidents. Of course, in order to minimize accidents effectively, it is necessary to take appropriate measures for the existing workforce and equipment, as well as develop a health and safety plan for the workers. Then we come up to the risk and hazard. 
But let me tell you this important thing first before we continue. Risk and hazard are two completely different things. Here's why. Risk is a process or condition in which a hazard can occur and the potential for loss is high. It can be also said as the combination of the likelihood of a hazardous event or exposure and the severity of the injury or health problem that may cause by the event or exposure itself. And what about hazard? Hazards are the causes, situations, or behavior that could harm people through injury or illness. That's the difference. Up next, we have the risk assessment. Risk assessment is a process of identifying pros potential hazards and analyzing what could happen if a hazard occurs. The main reason is to ensure that risk management for an ongoing process, operation, or activity is at least at an acceptable level or decent at least. Usually, the risk assessment is influenced by three things, severity, likelihood, and consequence. Now, let's move on to the last theoretical foundation, which is the Occupational Health and Safety, or OHS for short. OHS is the introduction of better condition for workers, which consists of several important aspects such as the worker's physical health, the worker's mental health, the worker's social condition, the workplace environment, the tools and the equipment that workers must use, and etc. The goal of the OHS program is to promote a safe and healthy work environment. Now let's begin with the paper review. The first company is the PT Sim Green, and the title of the paper is Analysis Risiko K3 dengan pendekatan hierark pada bagian finishing di PT Sim Green. Now, this company was reviewed by the Gatot Basuki HM, which also the who also the writer of this paper. In short. Uh, the number of accidents from January to August 2021 was 15 cases. That's not much, okay? It's it's average around one or two accidents per month. But an accident is still an accident. It must be investigated. So to investigate it, the company, Gatot Basuki, used a descriptive and quantitative approach to identify possible hazards and assess the risk. The investigation was focused on the finishing area only. The results are like this. In the finishing area, there are three main activities. Those are caulking in Indonesia, we call it pendempulan, smoothing activities, the second one, and the third one is painting activities. Now, in the caulking activities, it can be said as the Safest, safest activities among three of them. It's because, but before I started about the risk, the risks are categorized into four different category: low, which is the lowest, then moderate, and then high, and then extreme, which the highest risk category. In the caulking activities, there are three sub activity in moderate risk and two sub activity in the low risk. Seems okay, but. Let's move on to the smoothing activities. We have one sub-activity in the extreme risk, which is hands got pinched by the machine, and then three sub-activities in the high risk. Those are scratched hand, splintered eyes, and legs got hit by wood. Not good. And then one sub-activity in the moderate risk, and a sub-activity in the low risk. Then we come to the painting activities. There is a, a sub-activity in the extreme risk, which is hands got pinched by the machine again, same as the smoothing activities. And then two sub-activities in the high-risk category. Those are legs got pinched by the machine, again by the machine, and the workers accidentally sniffing the paint. Not on purpose, okay? Accidentally. And three sub-activity in the low risk. In these activities, the smoothing activities is the most dangerous one, okay? So it needs extra care and it needs 
uh, solution immediately so the writers give this three suggestion the first one is improving the standard operating procedure or SOP on every sub activity not just one okay but all of them then improving the management system and increasing the safety and the quality of the machine and the tools that the workers will use so it the sim green company may seems okay with the risk number but when it investigated there are some sub activities that's extremely risky it's mainly because by the machine because most of the risks are caused by the machine especially in the high and extreme risk category so when handling a machine you must the workers must handle it with extra care the second paper that reviewed the petex magelang company the title is penerapan hazard identification risk assessment and risk control sebagai pengendalian potensi kecelakaan kerja di bagian produksi body bus ptx magelang the writers are anisa devi primasari hanifa maherdeni and ekawati in short in short the in 2012 there were 117 work accidents that is really really big not gonna lie in 2013, the luckily the numbers decreased, but by just a little, just into 110 accidents. But in 2014, the numbers spiked into 193 accidents. It is really really bad. Okay, so to investigate it, why the accidents number are, are so high, the writers used the qualitative method to gather the data added with an observation, interview, and noise measurement on the bus body production division. Then the results are like this. The risks, like before, divided into four categories. Low, medium, high, and extreme. Low risk is about 24.6%, and in the workplace, the medium risk is slightly lower, 21.5%, and most of the risks are in the high risk with the 44.6 percent that's huge and also there is there are some extreme risk at the body bus body production division it's around 9.2 percent not by much but it's still an extreme risk in the company luckily they have risk control but the risk control may be not really that good because the accident number was so high some of, of some of the risk control are administrative control, engineering technique control, safety equipment control, and supporting facilities. To help decrease the accident numbers, the writers give the suggestion to the company and it is it approved by the company. Those are giving training about welding and grinding techniques, providing better housekeeping for the workers, and obliging the workers to wear and use the safety gear properly up next we have the paper number three that review PT PAL Indonesia company the title is identifikasi bahaya dengan metode hazard identification risk assessment and risk control dalam upaya memperkecil resiko kecelakaan kerja di PT PAL Indonesia this company was reviewed by Desi Siva Uroma and Dia Rianda Dari. In short, in 2015, the accident that occurred in the company is around 44%. In the next year, 2016, the numbers were reduced but into 31%. That's progress. And in the 2017, the accident number, the accident percentage, I mean, it's reduced again into 25%. That is almost twice better in three years period but it is still an accident okay it's need to be assessed to help decrease it so to investigate the company the writers use observation interview and documentation methods the endless work fields are there are three different work fields the first one is the fuel pipe installation system the second one is diesel diesel generator systems and the third one is ship mooring systems so the results are like this 
the potential hazards is on the fuel pipe installation system is the biggest with seven aspects with 10 potential hazards and in the diesel generator system is the number is the same with the mooring system which is four aspects with seven potential hazards up next with the potential risk with the score the higher the score mean higher the risk the the score risk is uh, range around 2 until 20 the first one in the fuel pipe installation system the fuel tank leak which scored 16 and air and oil leak that scored 12 that's really dangerous then we come to the diesel generator system which are danger of spilled goods oil or even fuel which scored 16 really dangerous and the danger of electrical current or scuff wire which scored 12 really dangerous same score as the fuel pipe installation system then on the mooring system it's slightly lower but still really dangerous which uh, the first one is the danger of heavy objects rigging or operator errors which scored 12 and danger when the ship have docked or exited the dock which scored 9 so what the suggestion given by the writers the writers suggest to him the occupational health and safety system in the company and conducting a study on the potential hazards by applying other methods that are more focused on the equipment and machine such as the failure mode and effect analysis method there are several more suggestions but the rest of the suggestion is not really relevant to the hierarchy the fourth paper is the paper with the title evaluasi bahaya kerja menggunakan metode hazard identification risk assessment and risk control dalam memproduksi rack engine overhaul pada CV Mens Group and the company is CV Mens Group that was reviewed by Riyandi Fauzan and Nia Budi Puspitasari in short in 2014 until 2015 there are some accident not not much but there are some there are one watery red eye not really good due to welding fumes cut into the eyes okay eight scratches due to the improper use of the machine and one case of the workers ex and one or few maybe workers experiencing hard to breathe due to maybe the fumes or something the the speculation is that this is caused by, uh, this was caused by the production room that isn't really big to accommodate all the workers and the machine along with the tools at all so to investigate it further the writers used the qualitative method to gather the data and the team conducted an in observation and interviews with the head of the production department hrd and operators this investigation mainly focused on the production process of the engine overhaul rack the results are the race rating first uh, the race rating there are three classification not four like before there are low medium and high okay there are one high risk and three medium risk that worth noting the high risk is the musculoskeletal issues due to incorrect work position work position the workers usually just standing there or squatting that's not really ideal you need a chair when working with the <coughs> with the machine and there are three medium risk the first one is getting hit with the welding fumes that could cause sore eyes hearing loss due to cutting off machines and painting without wearing a mask that could cause shortness of breath or in Indonesia we call it sesak napas what are the available solution currently the solution is the improving the production floor design such as prop giving a proper table and chair to the workers improving the management system and increasing the workers awareness and also providing more and better safety equipment like good masks and the suggestion that given by the writers to improve the safety in the company is by redesigning the production room or maybe 
uh, renovate it, renovate the production room to make it bigger because the room isn't really that spacious to accommodate all the workers and the tools there and also improving the management system the last but not least is the PT Varian Usaha Beton Makassar the title of the paper is Analisis Risiko K3 dengan metode hierark pada pekerja PT Varia Usaha Beton Makassar tahun 2020 The writers are Sri Ainun Muhtia, Suharni A. Fahrin, and Alvina Baharudin. And uh, unfortunately, the writers didn't have the company uh, accident data or accident cases, but uh, what they got is the some relevant data, still relevant, but not really related. In Sulawesi, South Sulawesi alone, in 2014, just in the one province, South Sulawesi, the Badan Penyelenggara Jaminan Sosial, or BPJS, recorded that there had been 150 work accidents between January until May 2014. The worst case is the there are 150 work accidents between in the five months period, which average around 30 work accidents per month. The worst case is all of them come from the PT Faria Usaha Beton Makassar. That's the worst case, but the best case scenario is the all of them came from the all company from South Sulawesi. So it's combined into 150 work accidents. That's the best case. Anyway, to investigate about the Faria Usaha Beton Makassar company, the writers use a quantitative method with a descriptive approach aimed at obtaining wider information with the hierarch method. The survey was conducted in the concrete production department. Okay, the results are there. There were two high risks that are worth noting. Those are machinery and workplace controlling with that's belong to the high risk luckily there were no extreme risk and the rest of the risk belong to the low and moderate risk which is kind of surprising and it's quite safe but it's accident still an accident so and the company has good risk control it can be said really good because the numbers in the paper shows that around 75 until 90.6% of all risks are well controlled. It's really impressive. So, the authors can only give one or two suggestions, which is improving the supervision of the workers and their environment, and probably extra need an extra care when operating with machinery. So, what can we learn from the paper review about the hierarchy implementation at the workplace so what we can learn is no matter where you work what the company is what the company do what the workplace is or where is it located there it's gonna be an accident sooner or later maybe different but there always be an accident an accident is inevitable But it is better to prevent any kind of accidents in the first place. Some of the ways to prevent accidents are providing proper safety equipment, making detailed and easy to understand procedure, and maintaining the tools and workplace condition. It is also important to have a control procedure and equipment to control the risk that might have happened. If an accident somehow happened, what we must do is first control and overcome it, minimize casualty, and then record and assess it. Why? Because in, if an accident happened, we can learn from it. Why, why it happened in the first place? What could we do? What we should do? What can be improved? And what needs to be repaired? Remember an idiom. It is better to be safe than sorry. Okay. Thank you for watching my presentation. I hope this is gonna be helpful for you guys. Thank you once again. Stay safe everyone.